Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. We are on season number two, episode number eight. My name is Keith, and I am here with the most amazing police officer ever to grace our planet. Yes, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Doug. I know. I was going to see how long I can carry that out. You're uh, waiting. <laughs> too much of a build up. So we have to say, former police officer, I am a civilian now. Oh, recent he's one of changes us. Uh, to this podcast here. I am in a security aspect. I'm a Monday through Friday guy. No more uh, body armor, no more duty belt. I'm enjoying life and living like the normal person. You're among so the land of the living. Oh, my goodness. Yes, I have missed my son and my vitamin D, so it's doing great. That's right. Well, now now that you're no longer a vampire, and we, yeah. you know, I sent Doug an article this past week uh, about a study saying that uh, people live longer if they're not doing oddball shifts. <laughs> Oh, I think I've uh, increased my uh, mental health as well as my physical health greatly. Well, what we're going to talk about today kind of feeds into this because your new gig, you're walking a lot more, right? Oh, way more. And so uh, we yesterday had gone to the Kansas City Comic Con for 2024, tons of walking. And you were talking about how you felt better than what you normally oh, have, right? Yeah, I'd say, uh, and we covered uh, the twenty three con on this uh, episode or on the show. I uh, encourage everybody to go back, kind of look at that. That was my very first time sure. at a comic con. Yep. Uh, this year, you know, I'm going into it. I've been at this new job for almost a month. Uh, my daily steps is uh, always above ten thousand. Where in law enforcement, you know, you're in the car all the time. You're writing reports. You're going to court. Five to seven thousand. Yeah. Um, like you know, dog. I peak at yeah. uh, twenty thousand steps some days, so I, I'm just trucking. You I'm are ready trucking. to go. Yeah. Well, on that vein, we're gonna we're gonna save the nerd news because we got a lot to cover today. Because we want to talk about our our experience. This was your second Comic Con. And uh, so we got the share up here and we just took uh, a large variety of uh, photos and video. And if you're watching us on YouTube or on Spotify, it's we're just going to click through our whole repository. Both Doug was taking photos. I was doing video. Uh, We're just going to click through and we're just going to talk about our experience. Uh, So, you know, I will say this. This is now I thought it was my ninth year, but I forgot there was a break year for COVID. So technically, this would have been my eighth year going. This was unlike any other Comic Con I've ever been to, and probably not in a good way. Starting with this very first picture that we have up on the screen for those on audio, we'll make sure we explain it. Doug, what are we looking at here? It, this this is really how our day started. Um, <laughs> break it down for us. <laughs> you know, uh, there was high hopes, and uh, we got there early, and we got in line, and we thought, okay. Uh, we're seeing uh, two, three thousand people, maybe it, it's it's going, but then the line did not move, and then we learned that there were lines upon lines upon lines. So we're looking at the photos here. Uh, you can imagine a queue line at a roller coaster or a movie theater with the little uh, rope uh, barricades. They didn't have any of that. Nope. They didn't have any employees directing us where to go. Nope. They didn't have any signs of this insurance, that insurance, anything. Uh, we were just uh, sheep out in the field with no dog to guide us there. Yeah, it was a complete guess. So we were zig. It was a line that zigzag on the wide sidewalk. And for context, in the last eight years that I have been going. The convention opens at 10. Only one year, my very first year in 2015, when I went with my daughter, did we ever get there at 10 when the doors open? And there's a crowd because they all rush in. Um, but usually it opens at 10. And we got into a habit of we would arrive by 1030. 30 minutes after getting there, you just walk into the con. That's what happened last year with Doug's first one. This year, we knew something was up. Because as we pulled up, the lines were so incredibly long on the sidewalk. Uh, now, it was only later that we were reminded when I was texting with my family and my, my daughter, who lives in Florida, of course, she reminded me this is the, the 25th anniversary for Comic-Con in Kansas City, Planet Comic-Con. Uh, and on top of that, they had an increased roster of celebrities. So we deduced that maybe that's why there were so many people. And, you know, it it was a long time. What was the total time we waited in line before we even 
got into the hall. Doug, what was that? You were tracking it. Oh, yes. Three hours and 15 minutes just to get into the venue. Yeah, that's that's absolutely insane. You know, I uh, I was going to prepare for a soundbite, and I'll just say the uh, SpongeBob SquarePants three hours later. You know, <laughs> it kind of felt like that. But uh, the crowd, uh, there's a lot of cosplay in the crowd. There was... Uh, happiness and uh i mean for the most part so yeah. we chilled with the crowd talked about stuff nerd things uh movies all that good stuff so it was a uh, okay time yeah people but, uh, were I good think, spirits i would say that yeah yeah i think uh planet comic-con the staff and the organizers they have a lot to do but they definitely drop the ball on guiding their patrons and their guests on the outside of the building definitely yeah, they- drop the ball on that Having more people on the corners, directing traffic, telling us where to go, that would have been Absolutely. Better. Or at least some signs, you know, put some signs on a wall, um, just something to direct us. Not that we are just sheep wandering around aimlessly, but we need a little direction from every uh, once in a while. Yeah, exactly. They could have done a, a much, much better uh, job yeah, at that. Definitely. However, once we got in there now, there's a video of us complaining, just talking about three and a half hours. <laughs> you see me? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I will say this. Doug was wearing this really cool. I had my wired nerdy shirt, shirt on. Uh, Doug had on this really cool pen that I people... felt at laundry this week. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. But people were stopping him for his pen. This pen is an LED pen that scrolls a message. And I think I'm going to go ahead and buy one for our video game conference that, that we have. Yeah. But people were stopping and, and asking you about it. And you got it on Amazon, right? Yeah, so the for those viewing, if I turn it on, it does uh, weird things and shows me the battery. But uh, for those on video, it is a little pin. It's got the magnets. The magnets weren't really strong enough. It kept sliding down my shirt. But it also had that QR code is to set up the phone app. But it has a little pin to go through your shirt. And then it's got a uh, little LED or LCD diodes and a scrolling thing. Uh, you can put any kind of messages you want. It's very basic, very rudimentary. I mean, there's some simple, simple emojis you can put on there, but it works really good. So um, I programmed it to say uh, the Wired Nerdy po- Podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and much more. And uh, a lot of people, I could track their eyes looking right at it. Hopefully it boosts our numbers. Hopefully I got the word out there. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. There's so many people. Uh, yeah, once we got in there, it was it was insane. Uh, I think the, the most notable thing was there were so many people that it was hard to walk. If there Absolutely. was, yeah, if there was a booth, a table that you wanted to get to, you had to fight your way to it to get across the way to, to get to it. And as we talk through this, I'm going to keep clicking through just so people can get the idea of between the video and the photos of uh, just how many people I was trying to get some of the the booths and stuff that they had uh, with like the crafts, the art, the merch. But you can see, even see on the view how hard it is. I'm barely moving. And that's the pace at which you're walking. You're like at a tiny, slow shuffle because there's so many people. It was it was insane. I mean, I'm glad that they got such a high attendance. But it almost needs to be in waves, which I know that wouldn't work for some of the merch. You don't want merch to run out. You don't want your favorite uh, celebrity to get out of the building. But definitely it was a snail's pace of switching spots with people. You know, uh, these tables are all squished together. All the merch is right there. You kind of switch a spot with somebody after they're done looking so you can get a good look up ahead. You only have seconds, too, it felt like, because you... We're so surrounded by someone people. else is pressuring you to, to take your spot. Yeah, like they're waiting yeah. to look. It was, it was not conducive to um, being able to shop. And honestly, no, that's the reason not. why I love going. Like some people go for the celebrities. I like going to find you know practical things, whether it's cups uh-huh. or mugs or things yeah. like that. Um, you know, no. one of the best tables we saw is up right now. Yeah. I'll let you talk about this because it's in your wheelhouse. I so. was going to say, uh, don't change the picture, but yeah. The, um, <laughs> Before I talk about Fallout and the Fallout series, I think uh, we saw an explosion this year. That can only be uh, because of the TV series coming out on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I saw Mm -hmm. lots more Fallout cosplay, 
Lots more uh, vendors selling Fallout merch shirts, uh, these uh, Nuka-Cola caps. So for those that don't know, that is the currency inside the game. It is like a Coca-Cola bottle lid, like the old glass bottles, but it says Nuka-Cola on it. That's what you purchase in game stuff. Um, This uh, picture we have right now is the Nuka-Cola caps, and so well done. I mean, a really good job. I don't know if it's stickers or the person's personal art, but it uh, looked really good. They did. And in the game, they had a lot of nostalgia. They have these magazines you can collect in the game. They had, they're basically notebooks, but they look like the magazines in the game. Uh, They had calendars. They had old, you know, clocks. They had the skill cards. And Doug's right. Like, in years, you always can tell what's big that year whether it's yep. suicide squad comes definitely. out you have a billion harley quins whether you know it's it's these waves and this year was definitely the year of fallout we saw more people dressed in fallout gear and then more booths with fallout stuff than ever before yep. uh, so it's definitely trending uh very well so. yeah and to kind of talk about last year we kind of saw a hodgepodge mix up of uh so many different uh genres movies all that stuff because i don't think one real thing was getting ready to come out or was out you know lots of star wars lots of guardians of the galaxy i'm looking at our pictures from last year uh there was a ton of john wick stuff and uh, john wick 4 had just come out last year so that was the it was it was also rebounding from covid right and and uh there was a lot more room to move around and i wonder the 25th anniversary this year or the COVID and not uh, like a special 25th anniversary last year. Yeah. What was the reason for such high numbers this year? I, I totally agree. And it knew is that people are now ready to get back out. There's Doug. He's ducking for me <laughs> in, in the video. <laughs> yeah. You know, I try to stay out of the way of production here. So Yeah. And they still had the cool stuff, you know, and we'll yeah. flip through some of these, you know, the Proton Pack groups. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, just people that do a lot of the foam molding with uh, oh, a lot yeah. of the cosplay. Lots of cosplay groups. Um, now, it it is important to note that they doubled the celebrity space, yeah. which I think that's what caused a lot of this vendor space to be smaller. That's my opinion, at least, too. Well, and uh, we were talking about it. I think they pushed the celebrity space out so much that some of the vendors you and I were looking for were gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about this uh, company that makes these coffee cups. Uh, another one that makes uh, really nice uh, backpacks. They were absent from the thing, and I only wonder if they did not get in in time to get their spot this year. I wonder that too because I think it was limited, you know. And there's still some cool stuff. I know on the video here we're showing this one guy. He takes like old computers, uh, the motherboards, and he breaks them down and he turns them into spaceships. And they you look know? great. I mean, he does a <laughs> very do. good job. They really do. I just had to call that out because it happened to pop up. Absolutely. We're, we're yeah. just cycling through our reservoir of things that, uh, of, of images. So we, we may be a little bit scattered this episode where we see something and be like, squirrel, hey, we want to talk about this. Yeah. I just want to warn everybody. It may not be as structured, unfortunately. Um, but yes, I mean, the floor space was definitely limited. A lot of the vendors said I wanted to see what they, I didn't buy anything this year, which is rare for me. I always buy something every single yeah. year. I bought nothing this year. Um, there's used to be booths with like leather working, uh, like leather crafting. I know my son wanted to get a, uh, journal with mm-hmm. leather bound and have stuff stamped. They did. They weren't even there. That a lot of, a lot of the common groups weren't there. Um, I would say the heavy, and you tell me if you agree with this, there's always been a lot of wall art. This yeah. year, it seemed like most of it was wall art. And the only yeah. there was only maybe four big, and you can kind of see on the video here, four big booths that have shirts. But there wasn't a lot of merch wear. It was tons of wall art. Uh, I didn't see as many cups. I was There's only a handful of yeah. uh, cup vendors uh, in there. So I don't know. That's just, that was my feel. I don't know if you agree with that or not. But. No, I do. I think there were a ton more. And maybe it was just the, our perspectives was off with that expanded celebrity center but uh uh there was a ton more artists displaying all their art there was a ton more um just kind of little tiny shops or personal people not representing really a business but representing themselves yeah tons of comic uh, a comic book artist i know i already said that but just uh not really merch really but kind of their own thing if yeah. that makes sense. Now the cosplay was next level this year. Like I, oh, I, I yes, I let it freeze on this one guy that's a Mandalorian on the screen, and it's just 
I swear every year people get better and better. And you got an actual full picture of this Mandalorian guy. He was just yeah, coming up. He uh, yeah. very appreciative. Uh, yep. Let us take a photo and kind of did a little pose for us. It was great. Yeah. So the, the cosplay was just next level. And there's some footage of, you know, just the, the Wookiee. There was two Wookiees there that were on stilts. And you'll They're see huge. one of them coming yeah. up here in a bit. And they had an AT walker. Uh, well, no, wait, it's an ATST. I remember I right, right? believe so yeah our friend Joe would be mad if we got that wrong I know we don't want to we don't make Joe mad he'll <laughs> he'll get his Jedi robe on and beat us with his uh, battle absolutely. saber <laughs> but no we have footage over here there's an ATST walker but there's one of the Wookiees there and he's on stilts and there's quite a few of them walking around he's but, a good seven foot tall oh yeah easy yeah because you you're holding up your camera here I know I, the perspective's yeah. a little off but it is just for those watching uh it's up yeah. above your head well, and yeah, and I'm, I was using, it was like a, a gimbal with a selfie stick. So I yep. raised it up high to get on that level. See, I'm standing next to that dude. And yeah, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. So the cosplay was really, really yeah. good this year. And I and swear it gets better. Yeah, better. we're talking about cosplay. Uh, Fallout really came into style. Now, some of the people, I really like that they did some homemade armor. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw a couple guys with license plates on their shoulders. Yeah. And one uh, guy was, was playing really cool. the old timey, like, uh 1940s oh, 50s yeah. music yeah. like that's on the radio in like the game. Uh, I, I don't think he had a pit boy but he was definitely playing the pit boy radio music it was it was it was pretty cool it was pretty yeah. cool so it was it was awesome and now we're just cycling through here um yeah. some of the uh weaponry the mm -hmm. uh merchandise uh, not uh, merchandise but stuff from Baldur's Gate and yeah. All Baldur's of those Day games good. is just so intricate and detailed, and it's great. Baldur's uh, Gate was a big at... showing on that, by the way. I do want to point out, I yeah, all the characters from that game, they had them in art, and they also had them in uh, a lot of the weapons, that sort of thing. Yeah. All the droids oh, were there as well. Yeah, the droids. Uh, no, I saw a lot of people controlling those with uh, remotes. Mm -hmm. Really good. Now, the little uh, droids that you see in the Death Star, that's what I wanted my robot vacuum to be. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> those little black ones that, that make the weird the little squeaky noises, and they go really fast. Yeah, they get scared a lot. Yeah, actually, you may be onto something. You could probably uh, come up with that idea and sell, you know, sell those droids and <laughs> cheap <laughs> vacuum droids, imperial vacuum droids. So. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Now on the on the screen here, this was something that's cool that we had last year. I thought I just, this was great. Yeah. It's basically cosplay for people in wheelchairs with disabilities, and yeah. they put spaceships around them. Like this one was Ant Man that they had. Uh, I think that's really cool. It was nice to see them there yep. again. They were one of the few familiar faces uh, that 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 had shown up there. Lots of arcade stuff. There were were there two or three? There was. I, they were so close together, but they I were. think there was at least three companies yes. with little arcade setups. Two arcades, um, one pinball, if I yep. remember correctly. And, and they were uh, tournaments. They though. were packed. I mean, mm -hmm. people were playing them left and right. Yep. And some you had to pay to play. I know the pinball was like $10. It was like $10 for the hour, which I was like, mm, I don't know if I yeah, want to stand there. But you know, for a whole hour. If you're, yeah, you got to pay that booth fee. I guess, yeah, the $700. It was over seven hundred dollars, was it? Uh, yeah, we looked it up. It's like seven hundred and eighty bucks, and I didn't see what size it is. I'll get that for you here in just a minute. Yeah, they did have game tournaments, uh, and so that was kind of cool. Let me click on through here. Oh, here we're coming up on our celebrity sighting. I'll pause it. Now yeah. we're standing outside. I got to be clear here. When we were standing outside waiting three hours. A car had drove by and yelled, you're, you're awesome, or you rock. And then Doug, the guy walked right past Doug, and Doug goes, did you see who that was? And I was like, no. Yeah, I said, my first celebrity signing. So uh, we're looking at, uh, for Brian, those not yeah. on uh, video, we're looking at uh, older guy, big beard. It is Bert uh, from Big Bang Theory. Now, yep. Bert's real name is Brian Posen. He's mm -hmm. a comedian and actor. But uh, it seems like a very down-to-earth, cool guy. Uh, what we're looking at right now is Keith's video of him in his little booth, kind of representing himself and the comedy club of Kansas City, it looks like. What's so cool about this is that he was not in Celebrity Row. He was on the opposite end of the hall where all of the cosplay was. And at first, Doug even was like, well, maybe maybe he's just a lookalike. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, some him. of the lookalikes are really good, but then it's like, no, this is really the guy. Because yeah. it did throw us off, you know. Celebrity Rose right down there. Why is he up here? Yeah. And well, what was cool about him, he wasn't charging. Like, if you just walked up and talked to him, he wasn't charging people. Uh, yeah. And now, I think he that's was, really cool. It was. Yeah. He, now, he was pushing his comedy show, and you could buy, like, I think he had, like, things where you can go and buy his comedy uh, and, and go see him and all that. But other than that, he wasn't, I don't know, I May, I know he's not a huge star, but I think it's pretty cool. I think he's hilarious on Big Bang. Yeah. So uh, I got to go back just a little bit. A booth is a 10 foot by 10 foot space. Uh, and it includes some tables. Uh, $1,100 is your rental price there. Oh, there it is. There. A little more than yeah. what we thought. That's the space we're actually looking at here on the video that he had. The yeah, 10 10. so they've got corner booths, 10 by 10, inline booths. Uh, it based where you want to be on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, artist alleys, they get uh, a little bit a little bit less space, but they probably don't have a lot of merch. So, well, or their merch is all wall hanging, vertical. Yeah. yeah. So the biggest space you can get is a, a 10 by 10 with two uh, eight foot tables, uh, mm -hmm. 1100 bucks. Yeah. Now we did find the one thing Doug did buy last year. It's kind of blurry. I saw I was let it play, but the wallets. Doug had gotten a wallet yes. last year, and they we found those those guys again, and they they had quite a few that were you know a good selection, but mine's still in good shape, so I didn't need another one. Yeah, you compare it to a Ridge Wallet or some other like big company brand name. Mine is held up very well, and I pulled mine out of my pocket. I kind of looked at my uh, power armor on the front there. Mm -hmm. Thought eh, it's not really scratched up or fading. I don't need one yet, but maybe next year. Yeah, but that, so they were familiar. That that's, that was good. Yeah, more wall hangings. You'll just see tons of wall hangings and coasters are always big, but this year I felt like it was o an overabundance of them. They had a ton. Yes. <sighs> And most it was kind wood. of a uh, decorate yeah. your house theme this year. It, it really was uh, less practicality with, like I said, with the you know cups and that sort of thing. They did have, you know, I was trying to get that footage. I did get it in there, but they had uh, what's the gauntlet, the infinity gauntlet. They had, and uh, I love that it had a sign on there that says "Do not snap." Yeah, I know that's kind of funny. Oh, right <laughs> it there, was really cool. It. I paused it so you can see it. It is well made too. I mean, it was Very well not made. cheap by any means. So. I mean, I have a big hand, but I still don't think I could fill the gauntlet. There was one of the worthiness that it requires. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't do it either. Yeah. Uh, now there was one vendor there that had video games. Now we've had a few collectors on. We've had your cousin. We've had my brother. One thing about this one vendor <laughs> we noticed right away was what Doug. <laughs> His prices were uh, way too high. Yeah, I mean. We've uh, worked with your brother several times. We've talked to Kevin. Yeah. We've been up to a con in Kansas City. Um, this is what I guess I would like to call ballpark pricing. You know, you go to ballpark, get a $10 hot dog. You're getting a $200 more for this uh, Sega down on the bottom. We're looking at a Sega Genesis CD. Uh, we've got NESs, Super Nintendos, GameCubes, uh, PSPs. They all, to me, were way too high, but uh, they were busy. They yeah. had a lot of people looking. And Doug had text Brian this. We were just curious. And he and I'm going to read to you what he said. I was said just trying here. to fire him up, actually. You so did. Brian's you did fire listening. him. You did. I this is what he fire said. him up. So just coincidentally, I paused on the video. And it says, what is that price? 149 on the regular first-gen Nintendo. Uh, yeah. And he said, yeah, Doug has shown me the pictures. And he said that the guy has that Nintendo uh, NES loose. He wanted 149 and uh, Brian had said it's worth 80 bucks right now. And that's what he would sell within his booth. So that gives you an idea of the upmark on this. I mean, $80 from 150 that's they were pricey. But you know what? The guy was doing business like yeah. that. And I think this is people don't know any better, but you are right. Doug. You and I have worked these booths. We've seen these prices on these things. Yeah. So we kind of oh, yeah. know we both looked at each other and we're like, Ooh, <laughs> yikes. Yeah, so I believe your brother and a lot of pe other people use price charting. So I yeah. looked up that Sega CD. Mm -hmm. uh, the loose price is only two thirty, and that was going for two ninety seven. I believe two ninety seven. That's what it says right there. Yeah. So that guy was pricey, but people were paying yeah. it. That's the sad oh, yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. yeah, you get a better deal if you go to a, a probably a game con instead of a comic con. I will say this: uh, there were more this comic. Cool. Oh, this part here was cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, Not to interrupt you. Yeah. No, no, you're fine. So I was there was more comic books this year than in the past, which I think is good since it's comic. Seems to be a lot. Yeah, there there was more, 
Uh, but uh, for the video that Doug was commenting on, it is really cool. Every year they have battle sabers, which are pre-made ones that on this big booth. You probably saw them on the video and you can just go grab one. This one was build your own lightsaber and it had each one of the sections of the lightsaber and you can pick your kyber crystal. This was kind of cool. So you can customize your own. We've not seen this before. So that was neat. It was very cool. It was jam packed there, though. You could barely get to the booth to see even see what it was. Yeah, so. I mean, it did have a premium price. I know those lightsabers bring in a good amount of money. Now, this one, build your own, was three hundred bucks. Right there, I see it on the sign. Yep. Three hundred bucks. Yeah, they're all a little. But I mean, if it's price. high quality and it's not going to fall apart right away, mm-hmm. um, then you have you see Doug sign in this video. He and I are just talking about our. It experience. works great and it looks good. Yeah, doesn't that sign like I'm? I think I'm going to get one for when we work. Uh, Only the eighteen bucks on oh. Amazon. Whoever I bought it from, shout out to them. Yours is green. Do they have different colors? They do. Ooh, I uh, just kind of a Irish green guy for St. Patty's Day coming up, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It looks really good, though. And he reprogrammed it while we were sitting there on his phone. It was really cool. Isn't he? All right. I'm going to keep on clicking through the merch here. One of the few cup displays. Like, yeah. very few. Very, very few. And they were picked now, over. See how bare yeah. the shelf is? Because there's so yeah, many Yeah, the people. more we went on, I think they were just selling left and right, which is great for them, but uh, not a lot to choose from. I mean, there were just a ton of people. Yeah. We can't emphasize that enough, you know. Yeah. They did have the booth, the really expensive booth there of the action figures where you can turn yourself into an action figure. But they were yep, expensive. They- they are expensive, but they've got a, it was really cool. They have a little uh, booth uh, that takes 360 shots of you, a uh, 3D model, and you get to make yourself. Um, I'm sure it's super complicated. That's why the price is so high. But Well, I kind of wonder yeah. if they have to paint them. You know, they don't... I mean, it looks very detailed. It's got to be some sort of 3D printer, I would think. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it yeah. is. But I, I think they have to paint them, though. But it was, it was pricey. But they, they were there that last year as well. Um, but yeah, as, as we're going through lots more wall art, that, that seemed to be the theme this year. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Wall art theme. everywhere. Yeah. It was wall hanging galore. We can get yeah. more, more arcades, but these were the mm-hmm. mini, uh, one up cabinets. They weren't like full or OG ones. And that's what it seemed like. They had one booth that was the original restored, yeah. uh, arcade cabinets, then the one ups, and then they had original pinballs. They did have tournaments. This this one was kind of neat where um, they were like drone racing. And they were, had these videos of these two people competing with drone racing within. Now, I don't know if that was nearby or, you know, if that was, you know. Yeah, I don't know either. Then they had, uh, now my wife and I, we talked about it. We love robot uh, war or battle bots is what it's called. We had an episode on wars. We had an episode yeah. on it, yeah. And uh, two little kids were fighting it out, but they uh, had a little trouble driving. <laughs> they attacked the wall more than they attacked themselves. Yeah. They had two spots. They had a, an enclosed case you see here in the video where they're fighting. And then off to the right, they had an open air one. And yep. you could yep. get a taste of BattleBot fighting, which was really cool. That was neat. That was a neat way to get people involved, especially kids, into the STEM stuff. So I thought that was unique. Right. Uh, right now, we're looking at, uh, I believe, a Jeep Wrangler all decked out. Uh, like got uh, some underglow lighting, upglow lighting on the top, yeah. uh, doors and windows. And... It's like one of the only vehicles that uh, we had there. But a lot of it just, we were just so in awe of the amount of people. So oh, yes. We yeah. kind of had to just stand back and just film. That's one of the few breaks in the crowd you actually see on the video here. Like, well, and it's found... funny to see all the people, they're just kind of worn out up against oh, yeah. the walls, laying down. Uh, we saw a little troop of uh, toadstools uh, that were racing earlier. They were all passed out in the first floor. Yep. Yep. They, were, they, 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 were, they had some pretty good calls to play. The hard part was, like we talked about, was you spent th- over three hours standing in line and walking. Yeah. And then you get in there, you're, you're already beat. You're just exhausted. I think now we're getting to the photo part that you had, Doug. I think we went through mine. Oh, I'll let you talk about this lady here. There was this really tall cosplayer on stilts, and then Doug got a snap of her. I noticed she was in front of me, and you probably couldn't I, tell in the prior yeah. video, but Doug Doug snapped it. It's really good. So she didn't have her helmet on. Mm-hmm. This is actually Pyramid Head from the game and movie Silent Hill. Yep. So she was on stilts, uh, blood all over, had the Pyramid Head in her hand. And I thought, we need to try to follow her to get a 
picture. And I didn't wait long enough, but I finally got a picture of her putting her uh, pyramid head back on. It's she really was cool. She was struggling. I felt bad for her. Oh yeah, getting and I'm through sure the crowd that on still so <sighs> much. Oh, my gosh, she was like barely inching her feet along, trying yeah. to get through the crowd in those stilts. These people that went all out on their cosplay, I don't think they anticipated there being this many people because they a lot of them had pretty rough days just even navigating it. Mm-hmm. They were taking it off by the end of it, so. And then some of the same, you know, I did zoned in on the uh, X-Wing uh, made out of the uh, computer boards and uh, capacitors. Yeah, and... see those? those capacitors for those. It's really cool. It's, it's creative. <laughs> now, I've seen this two years in a row, and I take a picture every time. Um, to describe for those, it's, it's a, a crazy little monkey thing with some wild eyes and teeth. And I, uh, <laughs> I got a picture of it last year. I thought, my gosh, I have to get another picture of it. I told Doug, I was like, dude. You keep taking I pictures just need of this to thing. Buy this thing. I think he needs to buy it. It's I didn't ugly. even look at the price on it. It's just well, so look at the background. Looking. There's a sign for three hundred and fifty dollars. I don't think you're gonna wanna. Drop yeah, that hopefully that's not that. But and <laughs> look at the little Thomas <laughs> engine trains. They're wild looking. Yeah, yeah. So. They had some some weird art. Very there, artist expression right going on right there. Uh, Metalwork signs. These are cool. These all look like they were cut with you know, everything from Frankenstein to Wednesday. Yeah. To well, and that's uh, kind of a shout out to any of our friends or anybody, any of our listeners that has a plasma cutter mm-hmm. or anything like that. You could be doing some artwork. Uh, you could uh, program your machine, do the CNC cuts and all that. Mm-hmm. I did like the bottom there. There's a sign that has the DeLorean, the flex capacitor, and it says 80 miles per hour. And it says, welcome back to the future. And it, it looks, looks so detailed, too. And I'm hook. sure you... Program that on a like CNC style machine yep. and, and cut it, it out. Just yeah. does it for you. But his knee's got hooks on it, so you can hang your coat. It's yeah. a coat rack. I look at the one up at the very left. Uh, they're oh. uh, c- climbing across. People. Uh, it's um, well, don't tell me. It's the vampire movie. Yeah. Dang lo- it. It's right there on the sides. If you read carefully. Oh, the Lost Boys thing. <laughs> I didn't see that part. <laughs> It's I been, was trying to get it uh, yeah. uh, out of the brain there. We've, we've gone through a time change and skipped ahead, so it's really Oh, crazy. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, more photos here just of the crowd. So I'm going to keep on clicking these. Are these are really cool heads that this guy did. Yeah. They were sculpted. I think they were hand sculpted. They were so detailed. You know, wrinkles in the face, uh, like acne and other kind of things on the face and the cheeks, the eyes, the masks that they're wearing. It's really cool. And he had the, uh, he also made yeah. some castles and stuff that I thought Grayskull. were really interesting. Yeah, this was actual He Man Castle Grey School. So that remember. right there, if everybody's looking, is about two foot tall, three mm-hmm. foot tall, maybe. Yeah. And then big. this one next one is huge on the floor. It's about four foot tall. Yep. And I can only imagine how heavy it would be. I didn't can touch you imagine it or check on it. All this stuff in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. There's your still shot of the yeah. He uh, really posed for me. He saw that camera up, and I said, "Thank you." And got yeah. the thermal detonators on the belt there. Yeah, it's really cool. It, some of the cosplays was just awesome. This lady, I just thought she's interesting, kind of a female Hellboy, I mm-hmm. think. I Plus, think uh, not to focus in, but pixels. I saw tons of pixels. You know, everybody's got iPhones, but mm-hmm. uh, I like the rise of the uh, Pixel phone. So go Android there. We didn't get a good picture of him, but right over her shoulder, you can see it's a guy dressed as a stormtrooper with like a, an Afro uh, stormtrooper. Fro, he's a white fro, and he looks like he's dressed in a leisure suit, like disco. He's like a disco yeah. stormtrooper. <laughs> very nice. Uh, you can a see Boldar's Gate. Art. Yeah, Let's see right there, Boldar's Gate. They're very prominent. Now, I did get a picture of a a, a, a rug. I'll just say that it's a kind of a scandalous. Uh, Rug coming up later. I'm sure we'll Nothing, see. Nothing uh, X-rated, but yeah, yeah. Here's the Wookiee. Uh, we big were Chewy. With. Yeah. Now you can see from the perspective in Doug's picture just how tall this guy is compared to everybody else. So he's definitely. Yeah, I'm taking my picture kind of below my chin at uh, chest level, and he is just huge. Yeah. And he's got a little escort there. Uh, I noticed that with a lot of the big cosplays, they have an escort to make sure they make it through those big crowds. Well, and that, and some people professionally cosplay, like that's their job. All they do. Is oh, go to yeah. these conventions. That's like their job and probably don't want people to mess up his suit because it's probably super expensive. Now, looking at his shirt, I remember them from last year, the 501st Legion. Yep. They are a big troop of uh, Star Wars uh, reenactors, maybe, maybe, but uh, uh, cosplayers that go around uh, to all the cons. Yep. 
and this guy just kind of a mountain man uh shaman yeah. kind of thing there's the atst up close that's yep. a good close shot you got there yeah. you can see the gun work and the paint they did on and the then you've bunker. got the little bunker on indoor yeah. i believe yeah i didn't funny all of that i didn't even notice the bunker which i should have it's huge it's like right behind him now the one thing i did not get a picture of talking about that is uh the gi joes had their own little base and watchtower i uh, couldn't get close enough too many people to get a picture of it yeah you have to like cross the aisle way to get over to anybody on yeah. these and you felt like salmon swimming upstream and i mean you, look at the feet on that guy <laughs> you did you, you had to ask yourself too yeah, his feet are huge on the the wookie you had to ask yourself do i really want to get over there or am i going to catch it on the way back i mean you really yeah. had to be strategic and navigating these are so many people it was crazy so this next one is a predator that's uh, strapped to some kind of sacrificial uh thing there i believe that's in the movies uh so some of the predators attack their own kind yeah it's on an obelisk i, I think this one this was actually there prior years too so this wasn't new i think it was there last year as well oh okay like, i yeah. missed it last year I guess. yeah well again you get on century over there but there's so much stuff oh yeah this guy was explaining how the wings work. That's why he's kind of in the fit, mm -hmm. the position that he is. But such intricate detail, I believe. And you tell me I'm wrong, but uh, Final Fantasy? I believe so, maybe. Okay. But I'm not the Final Fantasy expert. It may not be. I'm I, not either, yeah. I was just impressed that this cosplay, the wings actually moved. That's oh, what yeah. was cool. Yep. More weapons. And then just all the weapons and the detail. Yep. Uh, a guy was walking behind these uh, bots, like I said earlier, controlling them with their remote. It was really cool, going up to kids and making the noises. And now they sell these, the droids, the R2-D2s. They, the most impressive, I thought, was the Wally -E one that they had. Yep, but, and it's right below this picture. I did not get a picture. Uh, that's that. right. We had a video earlier of it. But you can see one kind of disassembled in the background, and you can buy it. But these things are expensive. They sell them for, like, thousands of dollars. Now, they're oh, very yeah. well done. So if you wanted to have one around your house, I guess you could do it. But i don't know pricey now if i could get r2d2 to shock uh people that would go. be i would use that that would be your home defense is that what that would be that'd be my at home taser <laughs> uh there was a uh, street fighter tournament mm -hmm. that was really good yep i just leg sweep so i cannot join a tournament ever <laughs> they were doing all kinds of moves i'm just kind of a leg sweep fireball guy well, what was hilarious they had a color commentary guy that's why, like, telling the everybody blow by blow like it was a sporty event. I thought that was kind of yeah. interesting. So, more artwork. Yeah, keep on flipping through here. A cat woman. Yep. I was trying to get the behind her. Oh, you were. But, uh, and and that's the challenge is uh, see all these uh, keychains on the wall. Oh yeah. And people kind of go in your frame. I yeah. Mean, so, Miller, you're taking a picture of them and you're trying to get the merch. Now you couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't figure out who these guys were. No, but I think you found out what yeah. game is from. No, so what we're looking at is yeah. three people in orange jumpsuits, uh, gas masks, and some backpacks. Yeah. One's the boss, one's the intern, and one, I forgot what his name tag said, but it's from yeah. a game. Lethal Company. That's what Lethal I was, Company, yeah. okay. That's yep. what I believe it's from. Don't shoot me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Yep, so it is Lethal Company. It looks just like them. Yep. They, did, they did have dice that were plushy that were 12-sided since we were recently getting into D&D. &D. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. You're going to have a plushy dice pillow. Uh, so we're looking at some ties. I, my new job, I have to wear a suit and tie a couple days a week, so I kept my eye out for that. I don't know that I'm ready to go full nerd on my ties. I'm probably going to keep it on the down low. They were a bit. little loud. I guess that's yeah. the word. Yeah. Right. He needs probably more muted for his, uh, his role. <laughs> At least for my probationary period, right. right. There's the gauntlet we talked about. Yeah. A good close-up picture of that. You and your, your Pixel phone and your good photos. My Pixel phone is, is good. So this, I was looking. They stop at the Pixel 7 Pro as far as phone cases. Yeah. I mean, everything. They have the Game Boy. They've got uh, um, Clone Warriors and all kinds of stuff. Willy Wonka bars. They were yeah. nice cases. It's a wall of phone cases, for those of you not on video. And they had them for every type. I, I really like what they had. Tons for iPhone, yeah. They were limited, though. Like, so that top row, for example, would be, you know, your model. But yep. that's mm -hmm. it. Like, that one, two, like, you'd have, like, four options, right? Yeah. And then below it would be an, another model uh, or, you know, all the way down. But it just, I don't know. It, 
at least for my area, yours looked like it actually had quite a few, but yeah. for the iPhone area, it was pretty limited to the, and it was the exact same ones over and over again. I wish they had a bit more variety mm. or I may have gotten and, a phone case. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, other than the great design on the back, I worry about the durability. Cause you know, I'm rocking a, uh, the OtterBox Defender mm-hmm. and that thing, you can drop it off a building and it's supposed to be good. So. Yeah. So it makes you wonder. One of the few t shirts. Lots t-shirt of t shirts. Lots of t shirts. Look at all the people. Lots of people. This was Look at, at that its shot. heaviest. I, uh, you and I, I think we're stuck for about 30 seconds. And I just took a picture. I'm like, we can't even move. You're completely standing still. I mean, yeah. you couldn't navigate. It was. And it was so crowded. Oh, it's nuts. It, and I'm trying to articulate it because here's the thing. You can see all the way down in this photo how dense it is. In the past, you would have pockets like this, yeah. and then it would just let then it would break loose and you were you were free and go look. No. Man. Well, and this hindered our ability, like you said, to kind of stand at the table, stand at the uh, artist or the comic book uh, place and look around. You know, I felt pressured to keep moving. Yeah, it was it was tight for sure. We'd have to ask our buddy Matt uh, what the fire code is on a building <laughs> like that. It's a big building, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I don't think I've seen that many people in there. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, we keep going, you know, the light plate switch covers, uh, those are really cool. Uh, more keychains, lots of sticker packs and stickers for your computers, coffee cups, all that good stuff. It's amazing how 3D printing is really starting to take over a lot of these spaces. That's all 3D printing. Yeah, you could and tell. I like the uh, the cheapness of a 3D printer and these mama pop shops uh, coming up. Getting a chance to do stuff. There's a better picture yeah. of These are all 3D printed, like a stretch. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, stretch Armstrong? Yes. Or the no, Buddha. No. The Buddha. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, uh, okay. What's the movie? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shrek. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. you can tell we're tired. I don't know which one you're looking at. Yeah, oh, so gotcha. Shrek, I could Vader, talk. Dude. Swamp Thing. Although that little there's a blockbuster sign and it actually lights up LEDs in a ghost. It looks like cool. a nightlight kind of. Yeah, it was really Those cool. were cool. Those were neat. Yeah, you can tell we're and tired. We didn't get until late, so we're yeah. exhausted. <laughs> Can't see it in here, but the Ghostbuster sign lights up Beetlejuice yep. and the Mystery Science three thousand. Yeah. I did like those. Or two thousand, yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, lots of Nuka Cola stuff. Now, these to me uh, were little uh, bookmarks. Uh, they had some facts about that individual drink on the back that what it does in the game. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at uh, for those not on video, it's a Nuka Cola, which is a version of soda in the game that gives you perks and uh, benefits yeah, for your character. Tons of Fallout stuff. Oh, more video game stuff. <laughs> now, this is that same guy. Yep. So yeah. just in picture form. Yeah. And, of course, I had to mess with Brian. Uh, like I said, the prices were uh, baseball-style prices, you know, going to the ballpark. You got them up-close videos so he can see that he's asking 200 for Oh, I had to get those Vita. prices for him, yeah. <laughs> or one of yeah. the Game Boy Minis, 219. Brian just picked up one of those. Uh, this yeah. guy one's 219. It's going to be at our con in April, I think. It is, if he hasn't sold it yet at yeah. his Midway thing. We'll, we'll definitely cover the, the, the con that we're doing. Yeah. All right, we'll keep but on. it was packed. You know, we had to scooch along the edge and try to look at everything. Yeah. Oh, great picture, man. This is a good one. But I mean, uh, <clears throat> shout out to my Pixel. It takes amazing photos. And uh, the iPhones take amazing photos as well. But I just have to give a shout out there. They both did get And what was cool was Doug and I divided and conquer. Like at first I was doing yeah. photos and switching. Them. Finally, I was like, oh, well, I'll just do quick videos. And he did quick photos and it was and it works out great it was great yeah. we're, we're starting to get it down to a science i think between yeah, the I, two of us we're starting to work as a team finally instead of against yeah, and his we'll phone didn't die because it didn't suck this year uh no <laughs> uh, let's talk about that at the very end but yeah <laughs> yeah we'll talk about phone phone uh, battery rates here because it, yeah. it's always a competition between us but this is a great shot it shows all of the different parts that screw together that they milled for the lightsaber booth. I, th- I didn't know you got that picture. That's really good. Yeah, and what a great uh, custom thing. You know, next week I'm going to talk a little bit about Xbox controllers, but uh, the world of customization and making something your own, uh, I think people are starting to utilize that more and more. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally. I found Waldo and Mrs. Waldo. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. I had to take a photo. Yeah, you found Waldo, especially in a crowd like this. It in would a be like a Waldo like book, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> There's the rug. Now, this is the risque blanket. Uh, it's not Baldur's risque. Game. I don't think well, it's you know, risque. Um, you hear all the stuff about the uh, 
friendship lovemaking aspect of the game so that's where i was going with it okay yeah. i got you but what we're i didn't at... get the other two because the other two were worse on well, the other wall oh were they i didn't even see yeah <laughs> i Actually, don't know you if see, you have video of that you can see but... my backpack and my my uh, apple watch i was booking it over to a chair i had seen so i i doug was still yeah. taking pictures but to be fair this is not this image for those of you on audio it's not no like... it's not it's not uh, porn pornographic or, or anything. It's just a guy sitting on a bench but. with blood on him. But he's a vampire, yeah. to be fair. But yeah, <laughs> it's like risque. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I like to spice it up and make them wonder. This was now. Cool. This was really cool. Yeah. So what we're looking at is a, and I can't get the name of the ship right. Tantive. It is the Hammerhead ships, I believe, yeah. from uh, Star Wars. Yeah, it's called a Tantive for Blockade Runner. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So really cool in a movie, if uh, you don't know, they would uh, hammerhead the big uh, Imperial cruisers and knock them off course. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this is 3D but this, printing. It, yeah, 2500 bucks, but it is so intricate. Uh, yeah, all the pieces come off. You can look inside at the passageways, the big uh, command center up front. And the guy said he used uh, like there's what? sticker packs to put on the outside. He used toothpicks or something, he said, to get those stickers on. Is that what he told Yeah, you? he micro brushes or something. Yes. Yeah. It was he individually painted every one of these buttons that yeah. you're looking at now. It was pricey though, what he was asking for. And I was like, oh, oh wow. yeah. But he three D printed the whole thing and then it's modular and so that's kinda cool. Here's the lightsabers we're talking about. Now these are now, the I got buttons. a better shot of it coming up. Do you? Okay. I good. think. There you go. Yep. And these are pre built. And they look very well done. You can look at the bottom. Um, they've got themed ones. You know, the Dark Sabers, the third one in, Exile, Deceived, mm -hmm. um, the Grand Master, really cool ones. And these are two, 200 and up. I mean, they're expensive. Yep. But they're well made. You're supposed to be able to like actually hit with them. But they're there yep. every year, so they're a staple. I so I video. took one video, this wall of shirts, and it's been there two years. I've been there two years, and it was there last year. It's there every year. Tons yeah. and tons of stuff. Yeah, still didn't find it. And they really. were swamped. I mean, they had so many people in there buying shirts. Well, and Doug and I foolishly thought, let's go in there. Maybe it'll be a break for the people. Nope. <laughs> More people in there as well. <laughs> it was insane. So uh, since I've been getting into D&D, &D, what we're looking at right now is just a whole table of... Normal sided dice, uh, D6s, D12s, uh, D10s, 20s, all those dice that you use for D&D &D and other games. Uh, so much to choose from. Uh, one thing I'll say, I was a little disappointed. We're looking at the D20s there, kind of in the middle. They didn't have a lot of weight to them. Uh, very light. Uh, some of the regular six-sided dice or whatever were lighter than it, or heavier than it. So I was yeah. a little disappointed. And I was surprised, too, because there have been some years where they they have and then we saw a few things where you have dice organizers that were made out of wood like uh, pine mm -hmm. and that but in the past they had these really cool dice roll towers like they look like castles and you could drop your dice in it rolls it i didn't see any I of, didn't that. See I thought, any I think of I saw, them at all i saw one. Oh, i saw okay. one but it wasn't for sale that's oh, what was yeah. weird about it yeah it was some kind of a gimmick thing where if you rolled the dice and he gave you a discount on the artwork or something. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't. Even there was another thing that you threw a Nuka Cola cap and you oh, got yeah. a discount on something too. It was like Plinko off of. Oh Price yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. Comic book. Lots Oops. of comic books. Uh, now some of these on the back wall, you can see are graded. The ones on the sides are not. So the ones on the back wall didn't have a price, but they had a pretty high gradings. Uh, highest I ever saw. I never saw a 10. I saw a 9.8 on most yeah. comics. It's rare to have a 10. 9.8 is usually the highest. But I could tell you, I know some of these in the back wall. There was a He had a Batman detective comics right over his shoulder. And that bad boy was even a 5.5. .5, but that's from way back in the day. Some of those are we're talking tens of thousands. Uh, so oh, that's yeah. why there's a Superman even over that. That's, that's probably why there was no prices on. Oh him. yeah, he's just kind of showing off his collection. Yeah, I think and selling this the ones is, on the yep, side. This is yeah. the best of what he had there. But there was what's cool about this booth here is there was a lot more of these guys, which I'm all for because it is a comic book convention. Convention. So there were way more comic book vendors than there have been in the past, which I'm totally okay with because that's what it's yeah. for. I think uh, younger generations come, know nothing about uh, comic books, or want to get into it, and they know a little bit about it. So, uh, What we're looking at now is a Nuka Cola gun. 
um, more Fallout stuff. I think that TV show coming up has really pushed the it's merchandise trying. and yeah. the cosplay. It really is. And the other thing is what's neat about this booth is right next to it, they had different bottles of soda that were colored drinks, but they sold these LED stands that you put it on and it would glow because in the game the soda glows just naturally because yeah. it's radioactive i guess but well it's safe to drink i'm sure i'm yeah. sure it is but it, so it's neat for a display piece uh, as well i think there was another yeah it reminded me of a lava lamp which is really cool there's the other nuka cola gun nuka cola gun yep now they didn't have prices i'm just thinking they were think, the vendor's actual art i think their big thing for this was they they were selling bottle caps and they did have the sodas but i think these were just for decorating the booth and i didn't get the plinko game but you can kind of see part of the sign right there to the left Mm -hmm. i don't know if you had a picture of that or not but you got quite a few pictures of those guns oh you went he went special to go i had to go around wait for people to pleasantly move out of the way so i can get this photo (laughs) uh what we're looking at is a face hugger from the alien series movie series uh, the little egg that opens up, the little face hugger jumps out and sucks on your face, gives you a kiss, you know, <laughs> and other things. But yeah, it's not not good. More ties, more cups, more ties. Uh, these were kind of chintzy, were though. Cheap enough. I just well, didn't but there's find a reason. One that called these, my name. These ties look like Doug said it. They look like normal ties you'd buy at JC Penney, and, and th- they just ironed on like nine and three fourths platform on the bottom or Millennium Falcon. Yeah. So it's kind of like, mm. and uh, the badge from uh, Starfleet, yes, and, and Rebel yeah. Alliance. And I thought it's a really nice tie. You kind of ruined it by putting this <laughs> cheap uh, artwork on there. Oh wow! But, yeah, and who knows how long that would stay on there if you? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the first wash, it's peeling off. I'm sure. <laughs> this was a cool shot you got. It was. Uh, so they have the Death Star kind of big window in the Emperor's chair. It was there last year. A uh, Guy cosplaying as Emperor Palpatine actually sat in there last year. That was a really cool shot. Now you got uh, what we're looking on video is the Imperial Guard, I believe, on the left. Uh, mm-hmm. Darth Vader, Darth Maul, and then uh, just an Imperial Death Star employee. <laughs> employee. It's the dude that flipped the switch, I think. Or yeah. They fire. <laughs> you know, yeah. the employee. The employee. This was cool. These were... Uh, there's a battery on these. These were little race cars they were uh battery enabled race cars i thought these Mm -hmm. were cool and they had like the specs on them and you could even like talk to them about how to build them and they would give you the specs and of course you probably have to know how to weld let me see it's all done but i thought this was cool these are i thought it's cool it reminds me uh, if you remember back in the uh, soapbox uh, late 90s early 2000s the solar cars that all the colleges were doing yeah uh, they bring the total cars uh, to all the schools and show them off. I do, but what's cool about this, when I say soapbox, that's what their shape reminds me, like the old school yes. soapbox ones. Of course, they have a battery. I wonder how fast does it say on there? Uh, the range is 30 miles depending on track and condition. The goal is to complete the most laps in one hour on one battery pack. Oh. Looking for speed. The goal of the one that's produced 100%. These are so cool. I don't know how fast they go. Pull the image up and zoom in real quick. I don't know if they have it on there. This was uh, the model, the 117 model we have up is from this past year, 23, 2024. But this was this is really neat. This is a cool project. Oh, uh, yep. It's uh, I've got it zoomed in really nice. 30 miles an hour. Whoa. Uh, Plus or minus 30 miles depending on track conditions. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is those wheels are like bicycle wheels. Going 30 miles an hour on those. Whoo. So this is the 117 Electrothon race car driven by Emmanuel Gonzalez. That's so cool. It's a 23 2024 model that they built. That's cool. That'd be fun to just drive one once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it's you grabbed a, that picture because I saw it out yeah. of my eye. And you were near it and were able to grab a shot. I didn't even get video footage. And that uh, whole setup, uh, they said, weighs 75 pounds and runs on a 24-volt deep cycle battery. That's so awesome. 30 miles. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. It's a battle bots. Yeah, I had to give me a little video of that. Uh, I was really hoping for some carnage and destruction, but the the kids were having uh, issues with the left and the right either. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get it from that. And I think uh, that's this is kind of a one and done. Like we are so tired, we've walked our steps. Yeah. It's a you know, I just looked it up. We had eleven thousand steps yesterday. Eleven thousand steps. I we were. Yeah. We were tired now. My son went with us, and at this point, we took this photo. Just me and Doug. We we're exhausted. We're ready. We're hungry. 
too. We're the old guys in this group. We are the old guys. So the teenagers. The kids are still running around yeah. uh, looking at merch and stuff. So. They were waiting in line to meet somebody and all this. Now, we were glad that after we took this photo, we met up with them. They were ready to go. They were starving. And then we ended up going to a Whataburger. I've never been. Neither yeah. have I. What would you think of it? I had a picture of that. I should have thrown it up. Uh, I thought it was really good. And, you know, these chains, uh, you worry about being a pricey burger. I, it was good. It was like eight bucks or something it for a soda, drink, and fries. It wasn't bad at all. You'd spend more at McDonald's. And the burger was huge. Now, we were in line, yeah. and Doug got to talking to these ladies from St. Louis. What was it that they told you? Because I, I thought yeah. Whataburger was like West Coast only. I know they were in Texas. Yeah. But what- now, what they said, and I know I've heard it before on the Kelsey Brothers podcast, uh, Travis, oh no, uh, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for Kansas City Chiefs, loved Whataburger so much that he helped them get into the Kansas City area. Now, this was in Blue Springs, just outside of Kansas City, but uh, he brought it in just so he could uh, enjoy it after games and uh, on the weekends and stuff. Wow. Can you imagine that pool? You like a place you can bring it into your city? Another cool thing about Patrick Mahomes, I was talking to those ladies waiting for our food, is he, I guess, Dippin' Dots is not sold everywhere. He has an entire freezer of Dippin' Dots at his house. It's probably that like really cold freezer, so he can keep them. Yeah. Man, fancy. Yeah, we learned all kinds of stuff. We didn't know this. Uh, yeah. And we were going to head mean, to McDonald's, but then we saw the Whataburger across the street. We took a very nice U-turn. Very uh, <laughs> kind of a right turn U-turn. It was, it was great. Uh, he's being gracious. Nice is not the word for it. I gunned it because the traffic was just kept coming insane oh and, yeah and so yeah but no we made it you know so putting a button on all of it um i will say there were bright spots in the day obviously got to have a good hang with my friend uh yeah. and the 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 whataburger thing was cool that was awesome we saw some cool stuff but it just i think it pales in comparison though to past years it was just too many people and i personally hope that this is not the new norm because i didn't enjoy it as much i didn't i didn't feel like i could like browse in peace or buy anything or if i found something it was sold out or it just felt limited we did walk through celebrity row we didn't talk about that a lot but it was so packed typically i love walking celebrity row because even if i'm not staying in line it's neat to see people in person we couldn't even see there were so many people in the celebrity space you couldn't even see them in their booths when we tried i mean yeah so. Yeah, I remember last year, I think you took me through Celebrity Row, and we could actually see them. You know, they were lined, but you we could see, see all the way up to the front, see them signing or talking to their uh, fans. Yep. This year, you know, there were people everywhere. I couldn't even see if they're sitting down, standing up. You know, we had to lean left, lean right around to people to see them. Uh, to kind of summarize the day, it was great. You know, the wait was a little long, uh, but it was worth it, I think. Um, I like you said, I don't want this to happen every year. I'm very glad that Planet Comic Con had such a great attendance. But as far as uh, me visiting, it wasn't worth it, I don't think. Especially not getting merchandise or standing in line to uh, get a celebrity signature. So. Yeah. And when we were at Waterburger, we were talking and Doug looked it up. And I think it was uh, the average is 60,000 people attend. We're guessing now. They hadn't posted the numbers yet because yeah, it was not too yet. soon. We're guessing. What do you think? Would you say double that? A hundred thousand at least? Oh, at least. I mean, you know, we talked about over and over and over not to be repetitive. It was just so packed. You had to move inch by inch by inch, left and right, get out of people's way. Um, You know, I I feel bad. Uh, I'll just say real quick. I feel bad for those mobility inclined and wheelchairs and crutches and stuff. So it's very hard for them to get through. And, uh, you know, you try to be respectful, but uh, a wheelchair takes up a big space, and I just worry about their safety. Well, and people would cut them off. Like, Doug and I had yeah, one Yeah, not gentleman. respectful. Oh, some yeah. Of them, yeah. We were trying to, like, be polite, and there was a guy yep. in, like, a mobile automated. It wasn't a wheelchair, but it was. It, it looked uh, pretty rough, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I worried that he was going to run out of some battery power there. The people were cutting him off, not letting him through. We saw a lot of people yeah. on crutches who had missing legs. Uh, people yeah. who brought children in strollers, and they had these big strollers, and they were struggling to get through the crowds. Yeah. So it made for a rough time for a lot of people. I just think if they're gonna, if it's going to end up being that big, they almost need to like figure out venue space a little bit better and mm-hmm. maybe plan it out. Yeah. And maybe there's yep. other parts of the venue they could open up. But not a lost day. Got to spend you know some time with a friend and get to see some cool stuff. Uh, so I just hope it's not the norm. I didn't enjoy it compared to the past years. So. Yeah, that's that's not. my overall take. I sound sound cranky, but no, I'm also I agree kind of with tired. you. I didn't know it was the time change. We get home and Doug, we're getting home late. 
I, we're driving home and I remind you. And I'm just like, ah, and it's already like, I've never, we get back from Comic-Con. We're always usually done and back and home it's before, light the, outside. before the sun. Yeah. yeah, it's down. And now yeah. it's like really dark and he's like, oh yeah, by the time change tomorrow, see you. I'm like, oh my God, you're killing me. <laughs> so, but uh, we made it through and it was all good. So yeah. we'll chalk that one up in the books. So I think that's going to do it for the episode, man. You want to wrap us up? Yeah, um, I want to just thank everybody for listening. You know, we went to Comic-Con this weekend, uh, saw all kinds of stuff. Um, I've been working on some interviews. I think we got some really good interviews coming up. Uh, I'm kind of looking at my phone here, looking at the calendar. We've got uh, Comic-Con. Nope, sorry. We have the Retro Gaming Convention in Columbia on April 20th. And then uh, I have it marked on April 12th fallout is coming on prime tv so we'll definitely be talking about that uh i think they're going to release all the episodes at once but i want to do kind of a one or two episode review and then we'll just kind of slowly keep reviewing them as we go on we'll just we won't talk about it long but we'll give our thoughts on it versus the game and uh to kind of wrap up i'm rambling here thank you all for listening you know check out our shop uh, like, subscribe, uh, whether you want audio or video, uh, we're here for you. That sounds good. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Everyone, take care. Have an awesome week, and we will talk to you very soon. Take care. See ya.